present good cause for quitting. Hence, we should affirm the AT decision, voluntary leaving, no chargeback. Affirm the AT, voluntary leaving, no chargeback. Short form dissent. I have your short form dissent. Case number 3142772, Commissioner Alvarez. The claimant was discharged for absences and tardiness following a final warning. The claimant's absences were due to an illness. The claimant could have made up the time for her absences and attempted to do so, but due to the timing and length of her illness, there were not enough days in the period to make it up. The employer had no sick leave policy, and thus her days away from work due to illness were not excused. The claimant's discharge was in part due to her illness and therefore not disqualifying. Modify the AT, no misconduct, no chargeback, and BI. Uh, we should reverse the appeal to render decision. The claimant was on a final warning for attendance when she accrued, accrued more absences related to issues with internet access. Although she could have gone to the employer's premises to work in person and had in fact uh, been informed of this when she called to notify the employer of her internet issues, the claimant chose not to come in and instead missed two full days of work. Thus, because the claimant accrued more absences while on a final warning, the claimant mismanaged her position of employment we should reverse the AT decision, misconduct, no chargeback, adequate employer response. However, if my fellow commissioners believe that the claimant should be qualified for benefits because the separation resulted from the claimant's medically verifiable illness, then the employer's account should not be charged. Modify the AT decision, no misconduct, no chargeback, MBI. Reverse the AT, misconduct, no chargeback, adequate employer response. Seems obvious. No, I agree with the chairman. So. Ms. Gonzalez, short form dissent. I have your short form dissent, Commissioner Alvarez. Case number 3165334, Commissioner Demerson. Commission should grant a rehearing in this case. Upon the employer's business consolidation, the claimant was verbally, verbally offered a full time position, but thereafter declined to accept the new offer of employment. Per commission president, when a company purchases an employer's business and the new employer offers the claimant comparable employment, a rejection by the claimant of the new company's affirmative job offer is considered a voluntary quit without good cause connected with the work. In the present case, the record was insufficiently developed to ascertain whether the claimant was provided an affirmative offer of employment. As such, we should rehear this case to take testimony and develop the record about the employer's job offer. The AT decision should be affirmed regarding validity of claim. The claimant filed the initial claim after she separated from employment with the employer. Therefore, the claimant filed a valid claim. Regarding the separation, the record shows that the claimant was discharged when her position was eliminated due to the employer having consolidated its offices. While the employer states that they had other open positions for which the claimant would have been eligible to apply, she was not offered a transfer or otherwise guaranteed any work. Therefore, the claimant separated when she was laid off by the employer. Affirm the AT, valid claim, no misconduct, bill reimburse an employer. Affirm the AT, valid claim, no misconduct, bill reimburse an employer, memo to investigate availability. Short form dissent. I have your short form dissent. Thank you. That is the last pulled case for docket 27. You should have received the short form dissent list already. I move we accept staff recommendations on the remaining UI cases on docket 27. I second the motion except for those cases in which I'm dissenting as reflected on the UI short form dissent list for docket 27. I encourage the chairman's motion except for the cases on which I'm dissenting as reflected in the UI short form dissent list for docket 27. Motion passes with the exceptions noted. Thank you. Let's uh, take a short break. Thank you. Thank
right, this is agenda item eight, chapter 800 allocations and chapter 805, the obligation and reallocation of AEL funds. Hi, good afternoon, Chairman Daniel, Commissioner Alvarez, Commissioner Demerson, and Mr. Cerna. For the record, Mahalia Baldini with the Workforce Development Division. On March 22nd, the commission approved the policy concept on potential amendments to the Texas Workforce Commission rules, chapter 800 and chapter 805. The policy concept was posted online for a three week public comment period and no comments were received. Chapter 800 proposed rules provide the commission flexibility when deobligating adult education and literacy statewide funds and consider an adult education and literacy grant recipients performance in the reallocation of those deobligated funds. Chapter 805 proposed rules provide modifications to the AEL requirements and provide updated terms and conditions. Additionally, TWC reviewed the chapter 805 as part of the proposed rule in accordance with the Texas government code. Today, staff seeks approval on the proposed amendments to chapter 800 and 805 for publication in the Texas register for a 30 day comment period. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Comments or questions? None here, Chairman. None. Is there a motion? I move that we approve the proposed rule amendments to 40 TAC chapter 800 and 805 and post to the Texas register and public comment as recommended by staff. A second. It's been moved and seconded. We're unanimous. Thank you. This Thank is you agenda questions. item nine, chapter 839 grants for registered apprenticeship programs. Good afternoon, Chairman Daniel, Commissioner Alvarez, Commissioner Demerson, and Mr. Sarna. For the record, Carrie Ballast with Workforce Development Division. On March 22nd, the Commission approved the policy concept on TWC rules in a new Chapter 839 mm -hmm. Apprenticeship Programs Additional. The policy concept was posted and no comments were received. Today's proposed rules for Chapter 839 are to implement Senate Bill 337 from the 30, 87th Legislative Session, grants to facilitate participation in apprenticeship training programs by certain veterans and military personnel. Today's staff seeks approval on the proposed amendments to new 40 TAC Chapter 839 for publication in the Texas Register for a 30-day public comment period. I'm available to answer any questions. Comments or questions? None here, Chairman. None. I do, I do have one quick question. Uh, do these rules allow the grants to benefit uh, industry recognized apprenticeship programs in any way? Uh, no, sir, not at this time. So they would be excluded, any, anything dealing with IRAPs? Yes, sir. Okay. okay. Any other comments or questions? None here. Sir, motion. None. I move that we approve the proposed rule for Chapter 839 and post to the Texas Register for a 30 day public comment period. A second. It's been moved in a second, and we're unanimous. Thank you. It's agenda item 10, chapter 839, tax refund for employers who employ apprentices. And again, Carrie Ballas for the uh, <coughs> Workforce Development Division. On March 22nd, the commission approved the policy concept on TWC rules for new chapter 839 apprenticeship programs additional. The policy concept was posted and no comments were received. Today's rules for um, proposed rules for Chapter 839 are to implement Senate Bill 1524 from the 87th legislative session. This is the tax refund pilot program for certain persons who employ apprentices. Staff seeks approval on the proposed amendments to new 40 TAC Chapter 839 for publication in the Texas Register for a 30 day public comment period. Comments or questions? None here, Chairman. None. Is there a motion? I move that we approve the proposed rule for chapter 839 and post to the Texas register for a 30 day public comment period. Second. It's been moved in a second. We're unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. It's just 9 11 TWC FY 2023 operating budget and 2024 25 legislative appropriations. Good afternoon, Chairman, Commissioners, Mr. Cerner for the record, Chris Nelson, Chief Financial Officer. Uh, last week, the LBB published the LAR instructions for state agencies, including the required submission date for each agency. TWC's LAR submission date is August 26, 2022. As part of our overall LAR submission, I have two items for your consideration this afternoon that would be part of the complete LAR approval I will bring in August. The first is a staff recommendation to expand the Older Individuals Who Are Blind Program, or OIB, by using $4 million in additional SSA VR funds in 2023 
up to 5 million in 2024 and up to 6 million in 2025, including submitting a request to increase TWC's FTE cap in 2024 and 2025 for the additional FTEs needed for the expansion. That, include, that concludes my remarks for that item and I'd be happy to answer the questions. All right, any comments or questions on that item? None here, Chairman. None. We'll pick up motions on both of them together. If you okay. The next item is a staff recommendation of statewide initiatives for the 2023 operating budget and 2024-2025 LAR. This includes statewide initiatives for the child care, TANF, WIOA, employment services, and adult ed programs. On page seven of eight, we have clustered youth and veterans initiatives to group those initiatives by the target populations, regardless of the program that funds the initiative. That concludes my remarks for that item, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any comments or questions? This was 11B? Was that? that that's my understanding. At this point, I don't have any comments. Nothing here. So I have some comments, uh, just general comments regarding statewide initiatives funded by both WIOA and TANF. And then I'm gonna have four requests at the end. I've, I've noticed uh, for some of the programs, staff is, is recommending either maintain or increase funding in situations where the historical performance of the program doesn't seem to support the recommendation. But I think we need to do a little more work on that. I, I don't think that fiscal years 20 and 21 um, our years we should be using to set budgets, they're very unique. And, and I just don't think it's a good practice to set budgets based on solely those years, but I think there's other historical as evidence that um, we can use to fund initiatives at historically supportable amounts. And we need to think about contingencies for years when certain programs show increased demand. Um, also in looking at it, I, I've noted that some of our programs seem very similar in nature, which I wonder if that doesn't lead to some variability in the program's success. I don't think we need to postpone an action on any of today's budget items, but I would like for staff to prepare a policy concept paper to address each of the following issues. And we'll take action on these at a subsequent commission meeting. First, uh, to fully investigate the program performance of the high demand job training and the Texas Industry Partnership programs and the feasibility combining these two programs into one line item, including establishing a supportable funding level. Uh, two, uh, to fully investigate the program performance of the Governor's Summer Merit Program and Camp Code, and to take a look at the feasibility of combining these two programs into one line item, including establishing a supportable funding level, which may in fact be an increased funding level for those two programs. To three, fully investigate a plan for the WIOA and TANF statewide programs designated as youth initiatives in our documents. To identify historical financial performance, establish supportable funding levels based on that performance, and to create an annual youth initiatives reserve fund to cover unanticipated surges in program participation and fourth, to establish a plan to track performance for all statewide programs funded from WIOA and TANF sources with a specific focus on numerical performance program outcomes and the return on investment. I saw you, see you writing notes. I'll give you this at the end so you can, I, I wrote it down and read it so we'd okay. be sure we were all on the same page. <laughs> Uh, other than that, I, I don't have any additional comments. If there are other uh, comments, um, we'd sure like to hear them now. I have comments. Since you stated CAM code, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and and my comments on the record for my support for CAM code and leave it where it is. And actually taking staff's recommendation and leaving it at a million dollars. I'm in favor of CAM code initiative as conceived, and with the funding recommended by staff. There is no doubt that this initiative provides vital opportunities for today's young people to learn and develop a skill set that will be a fundamental requirement in a large segment of the future labor market. The in person component of this program was affected by the pandemic over the last two years, as you just referenced, very unique. Previously, the Commission had to agree to increase the funding to on one occasion due to the unexpected demand. That was back in 2020 when we asked the commissioners to come back for $2 million extra money. Additionally, we've had more qualified applicants for the initiative than funding available. I expect interest and participation will only increase as the pandemic concerns recede. Camp Code is one of the rare instances in which the agency can directly focus on improving bare bones 
hard skills of future Texas workers. We should not dilute its effectiveness by trying to combine it with other initiatives that have related, but still very different goals and a much broader focus. The narrow focus or real world skills increasingly necessary in our labor force is what gives this initiative its strength and gives our agency the chance to stay relevant in preparing workers for the evolving demands they will face as they enter tomorrow's workforce. Those are my comments regarding that. If we are going to be looking, reevaluating some of the programs, I'd also like to put on the record then um, for staff to, to come to my office and share with me the current status of what we've used in funding when it comes to this blanket um, soft, uh, uh, what is it? Um, oh, what is it we call it? Uh, Am I thinking? I can't think of the word. I'm trying to get the Are word. you talking about any of the programs? In yeah, particular? something that we have in place already. I was planning to move forward on the recommendation staff made, but after hearing the unique, the very unique and historical evidence of some of these programs, I understand about consolidating. So I'll be looking at some of these other programs and ranking my recommendations as well is what we should be consolidating. That's all I have at this point. Yeah, it's, it's based on the comments. I appreciate uh, the chairman. Uh, mentioning uh, to the staff to bring forth a report. We're not taking any action today mm -hmm. on these items. And Commissioner Alvarez, thank you for the briefing and update on, on the items that we just mentioned. If there's no other comments, is there a motion? Uh, let me see what I got. Um, well, I guess my motion would be that we bring back the recommendations made today from the dais at a later date after discussing these, uh, these changes or possibly um, updates with staff. Would that include the OIB expansion or, or just for the statewide initiatives that you're looking to bring back? It wouldn't include it, in my opinion, no. Just to clarify, since there's two specific budget. Yeah, I, I'm thinking those are two separate items, Correct. if I'm not mistaken. I think that's why I'm just clarifying yeah. that. The, yeah. the, the request to bring back, I think, is that specific to statewide initiatives discussion? Make sure I understand what the request okay. is. My, my intent today was to vote out this package that you've brought okay. as, it, as it was, and then okay. have you bring these four items to a subsequent commission. Okay. Yeah. That's not certainly Commissioner Alvarez's motion. Mm -mm. Commissioner Alvarez. Um, your motion uh, was to, to move forward, but your question was uh, as if we were considering uh, the, the uh, OIB, was it OIB mm -hmm. um, uh, information, I think. And the, the answer was basically there are two separate items from that standpoint. That's so correct. you're in a position, to, can we hear your motion knowing, knowing that fact? Yes, so I am looking for my language. Mr. Chairman, can I just have Mr. Chris point something out? Chris, the approval of these two agenda items assist us in putting together the budget that's got to come back to the commission for approval. So anything that we put in these uh, policy concept papers can then be considered and and programs combined or not Correct. at the time of budget approval. So this approval of if the commission chooses to approval item uh, approve items. 11A and 11B, it doesn't restrict the commission to these as laid out. It helps us put the operating budget and the LAR together that we will bring back to the commission in August for any final changes. Yeah, so we, we have three things going on at one time. We've got this OIB proposal, right. which, which is a good proposal, and we should do that. That's my opinion. Uh, the second uh, thing that we have going on is the FY23 budget, which we need to take action on. And then the third thing that's going on is we're looking at 24 and 25 projections for the LAR. This document does, uh, well, there's two documents. The OIB is a standalone issue. The other document is the essentially the 23 uh, fiscal year budget, and it kind of sets the stage for the 24 and 25 fiscal years in the LAR. So whatever we that's why we need to take action mm -hmm. today I, right i think workforce division probably needs some certainty on their 23 budget so they can move out with that and i think as we think about 24 and 25 we need some things to think about 
Right. And, yeah. I, and I think we, in addition to this agenda item, as we bring the operating budget and the LAR to the commission for approval, make other changes to, to funding, combining programs, or whatever you want to do. This just gives us clarification for how we move forward to pre uh, prepare those documents. Yeah. I'm going to take a recess. Chairman, I'm back. All right. Sorry for the inconvenience. So I do have, I just want to make it clear, I do have the motion for, as referenced earlier, the expansion of OIB program. I have the motion for that. And then I also have the motion for our approving the budget for 2023. Am I correct? As proposed by staff? 2023 or the 2023. 2023 operating budget and the 24-25 LAR for the statewide initiatives component of it. But that's going to come back, right? The LAR? It's the recommendations to, that we're making from if, here? If that's what your wish is, yeah, that we can bring that back. Because I can make the motion for 11A, which is the expansion of the OIB program, which we're asking for today. I can also make the motion for the, um, the statewide initiatives operating budget for 2023. Right. What we're talking about bringing back at a later date is the LAR for 2024, 2025. Those were the three that were discussed, right? Chairman? I think what Chris is saying is, is that today we, his, stop me as soon as I start speaking for you in an inappropriate yes, way. Yes, sir. Uh, Chris would like today to pass the fiscal year 23 budget. Chris would also mm -hmm. like to pass the WIOA and TANF and all the statewide funds parts for the 24 25 um, LAR request. What Chris is delicately dancing around is, is he's not going to dictate to us our ability to change our mind at a later date if we want to. That's correct. Yeah. And, and based off your request of additional papers, there could very likely be, even if you approve the 23 through 25 statewide initiatives packet as presented, but by the, when we bring that back, especially for 24, 25 with the overall statewide initiatives packet, there will probably have to be additional items considered based off of the, the discussion papers that have been requested already as far as you know consolidating and things. So there'll, there will be other adjustments if, if possible if that's that that's what's being asked okay and also to commissioner um we we've not even begun to consider the potential for exceptional items or other things correct. that may be in our lar so there will be a series of votes taken on the lar correct because the lar is such a huge um packet in a sense uh, we purposely tried to break it up into bite-sized chunks instead of bringing you know two billion dollars worth of items in in one one commission meeting Okay. 
Mr. Chavez, before you make the motion, I, want, I also want to be clear. So in uh, concerning 24 and 25, fiscal years 24 and 25, we will have opportunities to, to impact that uh, that statewide initiatives uh, category. That, that's I, correct. Like, as I stated in my opening comments, our submission date is August 26th. So probably the week or two before that date, I will bring the entire LAR packet based off anything you had previously approved that you will say, you know, okay. uh, yes, that's the basically the LAR package you would like to submit. So we, typically what I say includes items previously approved, such as the OIB expansion or statewide initiatives or anything like that. Okay. So look, I just want to make it clear. I don't want something to go unnoticed. I mean, we got things that are being said here and people tend to look at every word that we say. I just want to make sure that before we make any changes that those are brought to the attention of the three offices. All right. That's all I'm asking. Mm -hmm. Brent, can you come up? Commissioner Alvarez, before you, you make uh, look at making a motion, I also, uh, I, again, being clear on my side, I have uh, initiatives that discussion papers that I want to bring forward, and I want to make sure that I am afforded the opportunity to bring those forward. And if that's not today, uh, then making sure that we do it before the August time frame is fine. Uh, Texas Interns Unite uh, National uh, Intern Date Conference, uh, also looking at Texas Industry Recognized Apprenticeship Program uh, uh, type opportunities, and then a virtual employer's best practice training webinar. Uh, for veterans, uh, foster youth, and, and folks with disabilities. So those are initiatives that I want to bring out centered around statewide initiatives for 24 and 25. And I want to make sure that, that I have the opportunity to do that. Chairman, thank you for affording me the opportunity to meet with staff regarding this again. I just want to make it clear. I'm going to read the go ahead and read the motion and we'll ask everybody to listen to it. But I ask that the staff come to our offices, give us updates with any changes or any revisions or any recommendations. All right. First one, uh, Chairman, agenda item 11A expansion on OIB program. I move that we approve the expansion of the independent living services for older individuals who are blind program in 2023 through 2025 as recommended by staff and described in the discussion paper. Second. It's been moved and second, we're unanimous. And then the other ones, I guess, are the two combined. And again, correct me if I'm wrong. I move that we approve fiscal year 2023 operating budget and 2024-2025 legislative appropriations requests for statewide initiatives as recommended by staff and any revisions that we made from the dais today. Or recommendations. A second. It's been moving and second, we're unanimous. I don't show anything under agenda items 12 through 15. There's no legislative report today. Is there an executive director's report today? No, sir, not today. Is there any other order of business to come before the commission? None here, Chairman. None here. All right, is there a motion to adjourn? Chairman, I move that we adjourn. Second. It has been moved and seconded that we adjourn, and we are adjourned. Thank you.